So over the past couple of years or so, I've been looking to make the kit I use much more portable, quick to set up and convenient. If it's portable, quick and convenient, the more I do. Now I recently did these portraits and this is the kit I used. So I thought in this video, I'd show how I did them. And I've got a great tip at the end for getting the best expression out of your subjects using a reflector. Okay, so let's break this down into three parts. The kit, how I set it up, and finally, how I edited the pictures. And let's start with the kit. First of all, there's my camera, my Sony a7R4, along with the 85mm G Master. The two of these together are pin sharp and just great for portraits. Then there's my speed light. This is the new FJ80 Mark II from Westcott. It's a round head speed light, 80 watt seconds, and touchscreen LCD and gives 500 plus full power flashes per charge. Then there's the FJX3 remote trigger, and this works with Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic Lumix, and Olympus. There's the Rapid Box Switch Beauty Dish. I use it with the diffusion panel on. I've got a reflector, silver side up, and then there's the XDrop Pro background with my signature vintage gray canvas material. So that's the kit. Now let's look at the setup which is really simple. So here's the camera settings I use, but obviously these will vary depending on what the, the light is like, where you are. But what you're looking to do ultimately is to remove all of the ambient light. For me to do this in my friend Ian's studio with my camera in manual, the settings ended up being ISO 100 at f5.6 and 1 125th of a second. So without turning the flash on, this is what I got. So now I have the camera settings, I bring in the flash. I set it into TTL with zero flash compensation added. I could have used manual. With the speed light fitted into the beauty dish, I position it in front and directly in line and above of the person I was photographing and aimed straight down to the reflector that they were holding or was being held by someone else. And that was positioned just under chest height with the silver side up. If I needed more light, then I just increase the flash compensation using the remote trigger. And if I want more light on the background, I just angle the beauty dish a little bit towards it. As for this kind of shot, I often do this on my own, holding the beauty dish and flash in one hand and reaching over to the camera with the other. I also use a cable release from time to time when doing this. With the eye autofocus as good as it is in cameras these days, I can 100% trust my camera to nail it every single time. And that's it. But wait, how come there's no reflection of the light in the glasses? Huh? Well, now we're talking angle of incidence and angle of reflection. So with the light high up and pointing down, as it goes off, the light would hit the glasses here. This is the angle of incidence. Then the light would reflect in this direction, the angle of reflection. Now my camera is here, not within the angle of reflection. But if my camera was somewhere here, then you would see the light hitting the glasses. But this is the kind of photo that you end up with. Now let's run through the edit in Lightroom and Photoshop. First of all, in Lightroom, I've made a few minor adjustments to this photograph. You can see in the basics panel that I've increased the exposure just a little and I've also added a small amount of contrast. I've also reduced both the highlights and the whites, and that's mainly to reduce the light on this. I've also increased the black to take the picture from this to this. I've added a tiny amount of texture and clarity. I'm gonna use a technique in Photoshop to really give the portrait some punch anyway. Now I'll just add a little bit of sharpening at this stage, I'll take the amount down to about 25 and then hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and drag the masking slider over to the right to limit the sharpening to these areas of the face. I'll then go to the Lens Corrections tab and put a tick in the Enable Profile Corrections checkbox. Now before I send this image into Photoshop, I do want to mention something about the profile choice. You can see here at the top I'm using Adobe Color. 
and that's because I like the warmth that this gives to the portrait. If we look at others like portrait and standard, they look too flat for what I want. I use them in different styles of portraits, but for this one, I'm sticking with Adobe Color. Next thing I'll do is crop this image to how I want it. I'm going to go with a 4x3 and position it around about here. And with all that done, I'll send this into Photoshop to do things in there that can't currently be done in Lightroom. Now I'm not fussed about making all these settings editable and using a smart object, so I'll just go to Edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2023. The first thing I want to do is to enhance the eyes. So I'll grab the elliptical marquee tool and whilst holding down the shift key to maintain a perfect circle, I'll drag to resize it and then hold down the space bar to position it over one eye. I'll then select the other eye by holding down the shift key. To make this second selection a perfect circle, I quickly release the shift key and then press it down again. I can then resize it and position it over the other eye. Now to brighten both of the eyes, I'll use a blend mode, but so that I can do that, I need to add an adjustment layer. It doesn't matter which one I choose because I only want it so that I can use a blend mode. So I'll choose a levels adjustment layer. Then I'll choose the linear dodge blend mode and you can see how much that brightens the eyes. I can now use a soft black brush on the layer mask that came with the levels adjustment to only show the brightening on the eyes. I'll also brush around the outside to soften that down. And then I'll lower the opacity of this layer to around 70%. Next I'll add a blank layer and name this Sharpen. From the toolbar on the left hand side of the screen, I'll choose the Sharpen tool. And in the options bar at the top, I'll use a strength of about 30%. And because I'm using an empty layer, I need to have a tick in the Sample All Layers checkbox and also Protect Detail. Now the Sharpen tool is a great way to add sharpening into certain parts of the picture. Protect Detail is great because it means we can add more sharpening without breaking down the image. But the way the Sharpen tools work is kind of like a spray can. Once you press down and start to use it, if you don't lift off every time you go over the same area, it just adds more sharpening each time. I'll reduce the size of the Sharpen tool using the left square bracket key and then brush over one eye without lifting off. I'll go round and round a few times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'll now repeat that on the other eye. So that's the eyes done. Let's put these layers into a group and call it eyes. So this is the eye adjustment off and on, off and on. Now I'll do some dodging and burning. I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and click on the new layer icon. I'll name this layer Dodge and Burn. I'll then choose Soft Light from the Mode menu and then put a tick in the Fill with Soft Light Neutral Color checkbox and click OK. I'll then choose the Dodge tool from the toolbar. In the options bar at the top of the screen, the range is set to mid-tones. It doesn't actually matter what's in there as we're dodging and burning it on a 50% grey layer anyway. Exposure I'll have at 10% and I'll make sure that Protect Tones checkbox is ticked. Always best to choose that option. Now when dodging and burning, I'm looking to give the face a bit more life because at the moment it's a photograph and it looks kind of flat. But if I darken the darker parts and brighten the brighter parts, it completely changes things. Now when using the dodge tool, I can also hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows to switch to the burn tool and use the same settings. Once I release it, it goes back to the dodge tool. So I'll just speed through this bit and then show you what I've done.
Now that I'm done, if I turn this layer off and on, off and on, you can see how the dodging and burning is affecting the portrait. And if I show you the gray layer on its own, you can see the areas that I've worked on. Next, I'm gonna do my 2010 technique, which really brings portraits to life. I'll add a merge layer by holding down the Shift, Option, Command and E keys on Mac, or the Shift, Alt, Control and E keys on Windows. And I'll rename this one 20. Then I'll go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. I'll set the amount to 20 and the radius to 20. The threshold remains at zero. Then click OK. Now I only want the sharpening on the face, so now I add a black layer mask by holding down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and pressing the layer mask icon. This hides the sharpening, so to reveal it, I use a white brush and paint over the face. If I press the backslash key on my keyboard, you can see this is the area that has been sharpened. Next, I add another merged layer and I'll rename it 10. I go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. This time, I half what I applied before. So now it's 10 for the amount and the radius. The threshold stays at zero. Then click OK. I add a black layer mask, and then with a white brush, reveal the sharpening only on the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. I'll now put both of these layers into a group and call it 2010. And if I turn this group off and on, off and on, you can hopefully see what that's done. Now, just so that you know, if I was maybe doing this technique on a female portrait or just a portrait that I wanted it not to be so punchy in general, I would just reduce the amounts that I use. So instead of maybe 2010, I'll probably go for 12 and 6 or 10 and 5. Now to add some fake depth of field. I add another merged layer and rename this one Blur. Then I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'll use a radius of 20 and click OK. Then I add a layer mask and grab a soft black brush. I then brush a few times down the center of the face. If I want, I can then reduce the opacity of this layer to get the desired amount of blur. So I'll take this one to around about 70. Now my ears in this picture look a little bit too red, so I'm gonna reduce that next. I'll add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And from the masters menu, I'll choose reds, but as I don't know if the reds Photoshop is giving me are the correct ones for my ears, I'll bunch all of these markers together. Then I'll grab the plus color sampler and drag over my ears to sample the red. We can see now that these markers have moved apart to say that the color between them is the red that I dragged over. To finesse this further, I'll just temporarily increase the saturation to 100%. Then I'll click and drag in the middle of the markers so that the saturation is mainly over my ears. When it is, I'll put the saturation back to zero. Then I'll just use the hue slider to add in the opposite color to red, which is cyan, to reduce it. There, that's better. Here's before and after, before and after. Lastly, in Photoshop, I'll add a small amount of glow, which also gives the skin the warmth that I'm after. I add one more merged layer and rename it Glow. Then I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'll use the same 20% that I used before and click OK. Then I'll change the blend mode to soft light and reduce the opacity of the layer to 20%. This also works great on landscapes. Okay, let's take a quick look at what we've done in Photoshop with a before and after, before 
and after. Now I'll save this, which then updates Lightroom, so that I can head back there just for some final finishing touches. Now in Lightroom, I just want to finish off by shaping the light. I'll go to the masking section and click to add a radial gradient. I'll zoom out to 25% and then click in the middle and drag outwards. I'll drag it over a bit to the right as that side of the picture is slightly darker. So doing this will even it out a little. Then I click on invert and reduce the exposure. Now I don't want the darkening on the subject, especially as they have a dark top on. So I'll go to subtract and subject. We can now see when I hover over the mask that the radial gradient is not affecting the subject. Lastly, I'll add another mask and choose a brush. I'll brush over the middle area of the face and then increase the exposure. And that's it. Let's take a look at the photo now before I sent it into Photoshop. And this is after. And here is my original edit, along with the others that I did of my friends, Ian, Anthony, and Gez. Now I've got just a couple of things to mention. Firstly, when I reduced the red in my ears, I did brush on the hue and saturation layer mask to bring back the red in my lips. Also, all of the techniques I use in this, I've actually got other videos on my channel where I go into them in a bit more detail. So I've added links to those in the description along with links to all the kit I used. But what about that tip? One thing I've found is that if you give people something to hold, it can help soften the expression. With the portraits of my friends, I didn't want smiles. But if you say fold your arms, it seems to immediately make people tense up. But if you get them to hold the reflector, it creates an open posture with the arms. And that creates a definite, noticeable difference in the face. So give it a try and see what you think. But there you go, a longer video than normal, but I wanted to make sure that I got all of the information for the photo shoot and for the edit into the video because when I posted these portraits online, they just seem to be really popular and receive lots of likes and comments. So thank you so much if you did that. But as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and click on subscribe if you haven't already done so because that really massively helps this channel. If you've got any questions, drop them below. But that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.